Welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast, the show where we help you optimize your health, fitness, and mindset on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. My name is Maxim Siguain. I am a former triathlete, powerlifter, bodybuilder, and basketball player, and I've been vegan for over nine years. I'm also the founder and CEO of Fit Vegan Coaching, which has helped over 500 vegans from 20 different countries to completely transform their bodies and their health. I'm excited for you to hear today's episode. Let's get into the show. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about how to build strength as a vegan, which is a question that I get often, and honestly, I can make this podcast really short, and I would say the same way as if you're not a vegan, the exact same way you're going to be building strength. Strength. There's no need to overcomplexify the process. The process of building strength is actually fairly easy and straightforward. I want to get into it with you so you have a little bit of a better understanding as to why that is and how this process actually takes place and how it can actually better serve you to do it as a vegan. But overall, you don't really need to change much. So the most important thing to note is that if you want to build strength, it's all going to come down to the level of um, strength training that you're going to be doing on a week to on a week to week basis on a day to day basis. In order to build strength, you need to put enough pressure on your muscles to require adaptation from them to be able to become fitter and become stronger. So simply what that means is when you are doing your strength training plan, make sure that you're actually challenging yourself, whatever rep range that might be. If you're doing a 15 to 20, an 8 to 12, a 6 to 8, a 3 to 5. Um, one to three don't really recommend is very um, higher risk of, of injury, but like three reps minimum, depending on which phase, which macro cycle you're on, depending on which type of muscle fiber you want to be training, that will determine the amount of um, repetition that you're going to be doing. And then depending where you're at in your progression for your workout plan will determine the amount of sets that you have. But the important part is that you're actually challenging yourself. So let's just say that you have four sets of 12 repetitions. If you get to 12 repetition with the weight that you're using and you can still do another five to six reps, it means that the weight is too light. When you get to the end of your rep range, you should put that you should be able to have at least like one or two reps left in the tank. You shouldn't be you shouldn't have more reps left in the tank. So that means when you get to 12, you can do another one, but it'll be a struggle. A second one, you're doubting that the weight's going to fall on you, right? So you're still playing it safely, but you're still challenging yourself enough to require muscle growth and adaptation. The reason why I don't want you to go to failure every single set is because it's really hard on your central nervous system, right? If you're always maxing out how much you can lift, your body is going to be so drained and exhausted that you won't be able to sleep enough to recover, especially if you're strength training four to five times a week. So all that you need in order to build strength is you can be training in the rep range for strength, right? I would put that in the three to eight rep range that would be kind of your rep range right there and you want to be doing um, some challenging weights but you can still build some strength from the 8 to 12 12 to 15 rep range also right so just make sure you're challenging yourself you lean one or two reps left in the tank um, again if you can do five to six reps after you've done your, your your reps probably too light if you can't hit the amount of repetition without it giving out on your form the weight is too heavy Right? You want to fall within the right rep range for the type of muscle fiber that you want to train. And now as far as building strength, just make sure that you're hitting your protein at 1.2 gram to 2 gram per kg of body weight will be the rep range of protein. And then make sure you're eating enough um, calories depending on the goal that you want to reach. All right, so we talked about the three different ranges that you can be in for your calories. is If you want to lose weight, if you want to maintain your weight, and if you want to pack on some muscle. Now, there's a big misconception that people think that they can gain an absurd amount of strength when they're going to calorie deficit. You simply can't if you're a natural athlete because you're going to calorie deficit. There's less energy coming in. Therefore, your body will not have as much energy to push um, in the gym. And so when you're in a calorie deficit and you're trying to improve your body composition, the goal is to challenge yourself in your workout and to maintain your strength and maintain as much lean muscle mass as possible. Because as soon as you go to calorie deficit, if you're not hitting your protein properly, you're not pushing yourself during your workout, you'll be more prone to losing some muscle mass. And so if you're in that deficit range for your calorie, the goal is to maintain as much strength as possible. If you're in a maintenance phase, you will be able to feel a lot stronger because the energy input will be a lot higher. And then obviously, if you're going to calorie surplus and you're doing a proper lean bulking phase or a bulking phase, you're going to have way more energy coming in 
that your body needs. And that's what's going to allow you to pack on some more muscle, which ultimately will equal to more strength and will obviously make you stronger because you have more energy coming in. All right. So the main three things, make sure you're either at calorie maintenance or in your surplus. If you're looking to increase your strength, make sure you're hitting your protein because obviously the more muscle you have, the stronger you're going to be. And then the third one is make sure you're actually challenging yourself during your workouts. I don't know for you guys, if you look at my face on those last few reps, they're not pretty. And once I'm done my workout, I am done. I would not be able to redo my workout after. And what happens with some of you guys is you're doing your training session. And if I ask you to do other, your, the same workout right after, you would still be able to do it, which tells me that you didn't push yourself enough. Right? And in order for a workout to be challenging, it doesn't mean that it has to be high heart rate and you have to be sweating and you have to be dripping in sweat at the end of the workout. There's a ton of workout that I do where I'm barely sweating at the end of the session, but my body is completely done. I've maxed out how much I had for each of those muscle groups, each repetition and each set that I have, and that's what you want. Right, so leave one to two reps left in the tank for every rep set. If you can do more, weight is too light. If you can do less, the weight is way too heavy, so adjust to that. Never give up on your form to grab your heavier weight because I know that's the, the next step when you're looking to increase the intensity. You'll potentially want to, to use a little bit heavier weights. So when using heavier weights, always pay attention to your form. If you're doing a bench press, for example, grab the front view here. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, if you're on podcast, just imagine myself doing a bench press. Uh, you know, when you're pressing and when it gets challenging, your, your shoulders start to torque, your arms start to get weird, trying to find a way to push the bar up. Your body's going to find the path of least resistance. If you get to that point, the weight is too heavy, right? That wouldn't count as a rep. It's not safe anymore. So always keep the right form. And if you're pushing with the right form and you start to get stuck and your body wants to do weird stuff, you're done, right? And if you fail, if you fall in short from your rep range, then it's time to remove potentially a 2.5 pounds to five pounds, depending if you're on a barbell or dumbbell to allow you to properly perform these sets. So those are the only three things that you need to focus on. And so obviously a vegan diet would allow you to recover a lot faster. You don't need to worry about the combination of amino acids. If you didn't listen to it, I did an incredible podcast with Dr. Clapper where we talked about the different amino acids and how plants contain all amino acids and that your body is a lot smarter than thinking you need to eat rice and beans at the same time in order to get a complete protein, right? The body's a lot way smarter than that and way more efficient than that. And so just focus on hitting your protein eating whole food plant-based can reduce inflammation, make sure you recover your muscle, push hard in your workout. And the last step, which is the one that everyone hates is be patient, right? Be patient, keep challenging yourself. And I promise you, you'll see an increase in strength on a vegan diet and your results can be a lot faster because you'll recover a lot faster, which means you'll be able to train even harder, which means you'll be able to become even stronger, right? So eat your veggies, just like your mom told you. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.